expose his upper body and show you how many packs he has. Put some nice soundtrack music in the background and it will probably look better than the drama itself. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where John Kian Good Storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. 夜色暗涌时 Love at Night is a 24-episode drama that's being aired on Mango Television, also Hunan Television in China right now. The drama is led by Liu Xueyi and Zhang Yuxi, a contemporary romantic drama. I caught this drama on the first day it started airing, but because of many other dramas are airing at the same time, I only get around to make a video about it now when it has already aired two thirds of the entire episodes count. I highly doubt it's gonna have. A huge change in the last third of the content, so this would be the only video I will make talking about this particular drama. Based on what I've seen, I'll give it a gold mine slash land mine rating. To be more specific, maybe zero point five. Goat mine still on the positive end, but barely there. As usual, I'll first talk about the story itself, and then the good and bad, and why I give it such a rating. In terms of what this story is about, there really isn't that much I can say. <laughs> It basically is about in current contemporary big metropolis. In China, a rather successful career man meets a rather successful career woman. Romantic story. That's it. Really, <laughs> there isn't that much you can say about the plot, because. Almost plot is not important for this drama. On the positive end of the things, first and foremost, and most important, and probably the reason that anyone who watches Chinese dramas want to check out this drama is it's led by two very good-looking people. Zhang Yuxi, pretty girl. Liu Xueyi, good-looking man. Particularly for Liu Xueyi because he just does mostly period dramas. And often the male second who just doesn't get what he wants in the end. Thankfully, this time he is the male lead of a contemporary drama. So, like I said in my weekly video, he gets to drive posh cars, he gets to wear suits and contemporary hair, and have the opportunities to expose his upper body and show you how many packs he has. He's one of those people who just doesn't look like he's heavily, heavily. A gym user, but he is. He's one of the hardest working workout person I think within his company with his six packs. Or I didn't count how many, but you know, <laughs> fan service. For every other drama reviewer who are looking at this drama that I noticed, really the reason they clicked into this drama is to look at two good-looking people and looking forward to those steamy, hot, sexy scenes that are stepping. Right at the threshold of getting cut by censorship. The second positive thing about this drama is it is a rather light-hearted drama that doesn't have any heavy element, whether it's the character setup or the plot itself. It wouldn't make you suffer <laughs> psychologically, particularly in the first third of the drama, first eight episodes. I think it's better paced than the later ones, and that's probably it. The positive. Parts of 夜色暗涌时 Now let's talk about things that definitely brings down its rating. First thing, at the risk of me sounding like a complaining old lady, because I've talked about that very recently in another video last week, dubbing. Yeah, <laughs> you see it coming, right?、Hey? How many people realize this drama has similar people dubbing it as compared to last week's video talking about? The other Mingguo drama and the previous couple of dramas. This drama just gave me such pain because it's running at the same time as Falling Love, 一见倾心 and then there are two people that are the same people <laughs> dubbing. In 夜色暗涌时 Love at Night, the female lead played by Zhang Yuxi is dubbed by the dubbing actress Xu Jiaqi, who has dubbed Ju Jingyi in Jianan Zhuan, who has dubbed Gu Xiang in Word of Honor, who has dubbed Zhang Jingyi in Falling Love. So when her voice shows up, I'm like, oh shit! Now I have four freaking faces overlapped on each other when I hear that voice. Certainly when I'm not looking at the screen, I would hear the lines, and in my head I see Zhou Ye's face talking one line, and then it gets morphed into Zhu Jingyi's face, and then Zhang Jingyi's face, and then Zhang Yuxi's face, and and then overlapping. I don't know how many people experience that, but that's a magical experience, and it's not fun at all. Male lead actor Liu Xue. In this drama, luckily uses his own voice, so that doesn't have any problem. But then the male second、uh, is dubbed by the same dubbing actor who dubbed 
Wang Ziqi in both Imperial Coroner and Once We Get Married. And then he is also the same voice who dubbed Lin Yanjun in Falling Love. Because those two dramas, Falling Love and Love at Night, aired pretty much on the same day while I was watching them. <laughs> Click Yoku, click Mango, okay? I just hear the same voice coming out of two dramas. And I'm like, no, no, this is terrible. My head starts to mix it up. And to make it worse, one of the supporting roles in Love at Night, this role is dubbed by Su Shangqing, who has dubbed many, many other dramas previously, including a few Wang Anyu dramas. And my brain likes to attach that voice to Wang Anyu's face because of the drama that I liked last year. Therefore, it also creates a problem. <laughs> if I'm not looking at the screen watching Love at Night, it's a mess in my head and ah, it's gonna be something I have to suffer for years to come because I don't see the trend of using dubbing going away anytime soon. And every time I click open a new drama, it's like a lottery ticket or opening a you know, those boxes that you don't know what is in it. <laughs> and you're like, hold your breath. Anticipation. Hope it's not a voice that you're familiar with, please. So my experience with Love at Night is as long as I'm looking at the screen, it's not that bad. The moment I look away, it's a different face acting the rose. Ha ha ha. I love my life. Second thing that's not so ideal about this drama. First eight episodes, I enjoyed it to a point and then it starts to, um, you know, it tapers off so quickly. The energy of the drama, the interest, anything that's worth watching just start to disappear. Particularly big problem is it just has too many subplot lines and too many supporting role stories that are boring, that are very, very long and just takes so much time. And then you have the male second row who is in competition with our male lead for our female lead's attention. Ah! <laughs> I don't know what I'm watching. What is this drama again? It is a Liu Xie Yan, Zhang Yixi Li drama, right? Like, where are they? They disappear for long sections of time. It may just be me who does not care much about the uh, second or third couple. There might be uh, viewers who like their story or like the actor and actresses. I don't know, but for me, it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Do I need to skip this entire episode? Because they don't seem to be in it at all. <laughs> the third thing is really this drama is just for you to do the eye candy thing don't take anything serious and you can't because while it's trying to set up the male lead and female lead as those like very career driven uh, professional people who have a lot of talent in the jobs they do, successful white collar workers, they really don't do any work. Common disease of Chinese contemporary professional, like having any kind of profession element in the drama is honestly, they don't do their professional work. And when it comes to the scenes that describes what type of work, for example, what type of conference or deals or meetings, their PPTs or how they resolve a crisis that show up in their job, whatever, when it comes to those parts, it gets played out in such a child's play, like playing house way that you just laugh at just how they solve problems and resolve crisis and how every trouble gets erased and just by, you know, because the script writer said so, that type of writing. It's very funny to watch those parts and you're like, yeah, I wish professional jobs and life is that easy. Everybody would be so happy. You kind of accept it as you watch his drama because you know you are also watching it not for that. You're really just watching to see if you can see two very good looking actors and actresses getting on dressed in front of the camera and getting to those scenes that you're waiting for. Well, it starts with a scene that seems to be like that, episode one, but then nothing happens until episode 16. So good luck with that, right? In between episode one and episode 16, you have like <laughs> 15 episodes where they barely just kiss or touch each other. <laughs> so even if you want what it is supposedly should give you, you may not get it as you watch this drama or you may not get enough <laughs> compared to your expectation. So after I've watched the first 16 episodes of this entire 24 episodes drama, I can't recall what happened to the two leads. I remember how they met in the first episode because that's how it got set up. The classic start of not liking each other at the beginning and gradually uh, through this thing and that and get closer and understanding each other more. And that's all you remember. If you want 
recall any details about what happened. You don't remember it. At least that's how it works on me. If you've watched first 16 episodes, I'm curious about <laughs> if that's what you get, which is, I can't quite remember what happened, but then I kind of know. So I feel like if I watch till the end of this drama 24 episodes, I'll still not quite remember what happened. <laughs> I'll just have a vague impression of two pretty faces just moving around in my head. So at the end of this video, I wouldn't say Love at Night is completely worthless or pointless. It still has some value, which mostly comes from just make it into edits <laughs> and cutting out like the sexy hot parts and good looking parts and put some nice soundtrack music in the background and it will probably look better than the drama itself. If you like the actor and actress, it's still visually quite pleasing, although it still has that <laughs> very typical mango lens filter color and skin smoothing type of thing. Apart from those points, I it, this is just uh, another drama that's very forgettable. I'm pretty sure next year nobody is gonna be talking about it anymore. I probably will remember it better than other people due to the traumatic experience of dubbing mixing up in my head <laughs> while I was watching it, unfortunately, with Falling Love. And unfortunately, 2021, we had Jia Nanzhuan and Imperial Coroner and once we get married and Word of Honor where all those people's voice just get all mixed up. Ah! <laughs> And how lucky am I that I am a Chinese drama reviewer where dubbing real life people is a thing in our drama land, which is not in pretty much every other country in this world. And I have to watch hundreds of dramas every year and I suffer. Sometimes I just want to sue all those platforms <laughs> for the mental stress I suffer by reviewing their dramas. Okay, that should be the end of this video. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Meanwhile, live long and happy travel. I love my job.